Oh, I had a great childhood. I mean, I'm an only child, and everyone said my parents have spoiled me, but I don't reckon so. But you know, I used to run around with bare feet, and the house we stayed in was like in a no other houses close. It was a small fishing village, and to be on the beach every day, swim, you know, bicycles, you know, motorbikes in later life, and it was just absolutely idyllic. You know, climate was good, and. I was mad on motorbikes and those sort of things, but I always wanted to have a mechanical job. I like industry very, very much. I did my apprenticeship and I just always wanted to travel. But during that time, we all have to go to the army. So I spent about two years in the army, and not all full time, but nine months would be the longest stint. And then we'd be called up for three months, three weeks, or whatever it would be. Went up to Johannesburg to, you know, the big golden city, as they say. And Worked in a job there and moved around quite a lot. And went out of the country, went to Rhodesia, Malawi, Southwest Africa, and just, you know, I love VW Beetles and Combi Beds. Always make sure you have one of them and stay in boarding houses and meet people and friends and, you know, just build up a relationship with people. It's great. Mates phoned me up from um, Cape Town and said, Oh, we're going overseas, do you want to come with us? I said, Yeah, sure. I, I need more money. So I saw this job and I thought, oh, well, I'll go for that one. And it was with ovary scales and I had the whole of South West Africa as my area. Had all these scales in the back and I used to just go around, sell out the back of this combi van to all the little shops and little black shops where they'd be weighing sugar and milli meal porridge or anything like that. And it was just a great job and, and the money was good and that's the main reason I went and did that because I needed money to go overseas to travel with. We went overseas on, um, on the Union Castle line, I think it was the Pendennis Castle, the three of us were all in a cabin together having a good time and ended up um, in Southampton, got off the boat and um, I think I'd spent all my money on the boat having a good time. I got um, I think an entry for about three months and, but as soon as, as I was there I got a British passport and that was really the opening to let me go all over Europe because you couldn't travel very far on a South African passport, especially during you know, those early communist days. I had a girlfriend in London who, um, who her boyfriend was doing the same thing. He worked for a travel company and she said to me, she said, you know, you're not going to get money to do anything. Why don't you try and get a job driving buses or whatever? And so I said, yeah, no, fair enough. So I went for an interview for this company and it was an Australian company. They were based in London and um, I got a job driving these travel coaches around Europe. Camping tours, just like Contiki is today. I drove passengers all over Europe for eight week, eight, eight week tours mainly, Central Europe to Greece and Turkey. And then I did trips into Russia as well, and Scandinavian countries. <laughs> Lots of girlfriends, I've still got the yellow book. I'd, I'd sort of had enough, my mother was quite ill in South Africa and I thought, well I better call it a day because you can keep on doing these things, it's such a good life but you, you've got to sort of settle down. So I phoned the boss back up in London at the end of one of a nine week trip and I said, oh yeah, look, I want to call it a day and he said, yeah, no problem. So I got back to London and there was a tour going out or maybe two or three days later, he said, look, I've got no one to drive, can you please drive this bus for me? I said, yeah, no, that's fine. So I took this bus out and that's when I met my wife. I remember I took her out for dinner one night in Lucerne in Switzerland and you know, drove up the highway in the coach just like you're driving a car but she was sitting behind me and yeah, we had a great time. She was on that trip with me for 10 days and then they got another driver and I went back and actually went to New Zealand first, stayed there and worked there a while then came back here to Australia. My idea was to come into Sydney and go to Perth and then from Perth work my way back to South Africa and then I came I was working in Sydney for a plastic company up there and I think I wrote a few letters to Trish, my wife. I phoned her a couple of times and she invited me down to Wagga. So I came down one day, I drove down, I think it was New Year's Day, I spent New Year's with her. Engaged and married in three months and you know, we're still going strong. We went back to South Africa and um, I worked there for different companies and started my own business, which is about the same size as it is here now. And um, Trisha eventually wanted to come home. I knew she wanted to come home. So we came back to Australia, settled in Sydney, and eventually opened my own business. 
and uh, Belinda, my daughter, was born over there. You know, Trisha said, well, you're going to kill yourself in Sydney, you know, you're working too hard. And I said, well, fair enough, what do we do? She said, well, we're going down to Wagga. So I said, oh, OK. Well, down to Wagga we came. We moved the whole business down here. I said, we went, wonderful. Had a great time here, and great family and great friends. And I mean, to be accepted here, it's, it's sort of a privilege, really. I feel very proud that, you know, I have been accepted in the community. It's the same as like marrying someone. You, you know, you, you build up a relationship and you're compatible, but you have to work on it, really. So, I mean, you know, I could have met a Chinese girl and maybe... You know, I'd be staying in, you know, central China, Mongolia, or it could have been New Zealand, it could have been South America. But I mean, my heart could still maybe be in Cape Town. <laughs> Stop it.